Hello, massage nurse. Today I'm going to be doing the pathologies of the cardiovascular system part two. So if you haven't seen part one, go back and do that one and then come back to part two. So today I'll be talking about hypertension, myocardial infarction, peripheral arterial disease, phlebitis, Raynaud syndrome, and varicose veins. So let's start with hypertension, which is also known as high blood pressure. And uh, uh, this is usually over time, it progresses. You know, every time you go to the doctor, they check you. And normal um, blood pressure is 120 over 80. And high blood pressure is considered anything over 140 over 90. 90 is the borderline. And uh, it's systole is the 120 and diastole is the bottom number. And what it is, is the pressure going through the arterial walls, like the uh, diastole is a little bit more dangerous because that means that the heart is having to work a little bit, you know, harder to blood that, you know, to pump that blood through your system. And it's also related to stress and, you know, other things, but when you have uh, two or three days out of the week that your blood pressure is high, that's when it's already considered high blood pressure. You know, every time you go to the doctor and they check it and two out of the three times that you've been in, it's been high, it will be considered a uh, high blood pressure. It's also known as the silent killer because there really are no symptoms, you know, except some people might get, you know, mild headaches or lightheadedness. And that's one of the things that you need to be careful with your clients that a lot of the times when they're laying down after a massage, especially prone, and then they get up, they might feel a little lightheaded. They might need some assistance. So you need to be real careful with that with your clients that if they do have high blood pressure, that you can check it either before, if especially if they're not taking medication. If they're on medication, then it is controlled. Um, what happens is the arterial walls get damaged and eventually that leads to atherosclerosis and damage to the liver, to the heart. And uh, some of the factors are like diabetes, being overweight, lack of exercise, uh, smoking. That's another one that affects high blood pressure. So if your client's doing okay, then it's okay to give them a normal massage. If not, you know, you want to keep it on the light side, especially if they've been feeling bad. You Again, you might want to keep it at a level 3 out of 10 and always keep them comfortable. And like I said, assist them at the end if, in case they get, you know, feel lightheaded. Um, so the next one would be the myocardial infarction, and that's another name for a heart attack. And uh, what this is, it's a sudden disruption of blood flow to the heart. So either by reduced blood, either by a ruptured vessel or reduced blood by a vessel that's constricted. So uh, if it's a ruptured vessel, then that's extremely dangerous. You know, that's when they have to go to the hospital. Uh, it depends on your client how you know how long ago they had a heart attack if they've recently had one they usually feel weak for a very long time and you know again lightheaded so make sure that they have been released by their doctor before you work on them and if it's been a while that they've had a heart attack and then you can give a normal you know massage and and if not you know keep it at a level three until they you know start feeling better and time has gone by of course it reduces stress you know helps with their sleeping better sleeping habits and sleeping patterns and it you know engages the um the parasympathetic system which you want to do you know in cases like hypertension and myocardial and you know uh, infarction so the next one is peripheral ar arterial disease and that is atherosclerosis outside of the heart atherosclerosis in part one remember was in the heart vessels because the heart has its own blood vessels so the peripheral arterial disease is outside of the heart peripheral meaning that you know the peripheral like your your limbs you know your arms your legs so outside of the heart anything outside of the heart that will be peripheral arterial disease and uh, that you know they it, Unfortunately, you know, it may promote, you know, blood clots are common in the legs and uh, 
renal, you know, in, in the kidneys also. So you have to be real careful with this. If they've recently been diagnosed, make sure that they don't have, you know, any blood clots or uh, <clears throat> one of the things that you want to look out for, like in the legs, you know, when it's in the uh, peripheral, the legs, if, again, you know, that they don't have heat or uh, pain or redness or inflammation because those are indications of a blood clot and you do not that's a contraindication you do not want to work that and dislodge you know that blood clot so be very careful with that make sure you take a good you know um, medical history and find out where they're at or you know if they're on uh, medications also because a lot of times you know the medications does affect them so you have to do a little bit of homework that's why it's so important i always say the interview with your client begins on the phone not when they walk in the door but when they're setting up that appointment when you if you have a chance to talk to them on the phone you can start finding out some of these things so you can look them up before they come in and you can be prepared so that would be the peripheral arterial disease and phlebitis is inflammation of the veins <clears throat> it affects the extremities usually you know uh, after sitting for a long for long periods of time like when you go on a car you know vacation where you travel somewhere driving or sitting on a plane for a long time or people that are at their desk and don't get up or people that uh, you know that stand also for long periods of time so unfortunately this can lead to uh, blood clots, which that would be uh, called thrombo thrombophlebitis, you know, because now there's a, 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 a blood clot. It's common, like I said, in pregnancy, people that have been sitting, you know, down for a long time. And what happens is the, uh, the veins, you know, become damaged. And once they're damaged, they just don't have that elasticity, you know, um, to, to go back, to bounce back. So this is the veins, not necessarily not the arteries so the precautions that you take is that you know you want to keep the level of the massage at a three out of a ten especially around those areas you know around the neck and shoulders you don't have to but around the areas where they have phlebitis you want to give it a little slow just to have you know enough time for the venous return you know because the, remember that in the legs it's uh, the blood goes you know centripetal back towards the heart and the little valves close um, so that you want to give time slow enough so that the the uh, blood flow doesn't back up and that the vein has a chance to you know to refill again so that would be phlebitis Raynaud syndrome is episodes of vessel spasms in the fingers and the toes mainly in the feet and in the nose they feel cold all the time and i did have a client that had a uh, Raynaud disease and i there was nothing i could ever do to keep her warm enough her feet were always very cold and uh, her nose too so i you know i i would uh, put a an extra you know uh, towel you know over her feet and use the hydrocolator you know the 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 warm hot packs on her feet just to try to keep her warm and comfortable and uh you know friction you can do extra friction on on her feet and i would always make sure my hands were warm and just try to spend a little bit more uh you know more time with them and a lot of times this is a comp accompanied you know with people that have lupus or scleroderma you know they have other underlying issues so if they have other other underlying issues then it's called um uh Raynaud syndrome and if there's nothing else going on and it's just you know the uh, coldness and it's there's no other illnesses then it's Raynaud's disease the next one is varicose veins and um, these are dilated veins that have become weak and again it, it can be from people you know standing for long periods of time you know the blood vessels become weak or women that are pregnant and you know that that weight puts a lot of pressure you know on the abdominal pelvic and uh you know once the valves are dilated you know it's hard for them to go back to their normal state especially after you know um after years you know after years of standing up or <clears throat> you know um damage to these veins and what happens is 
the little valves that shut you know they're very delicate that's why it's so important that when you give a massage that you give it always towards the heart on the legs on the legs you always want to put pressure towards the heart it's okay you know i mean the petrissage and light strokes are okay on the legs but if you're going to use you know pressure always towards the heart assisting those valves don't ever put pressure against the valves because they start becoming weak like in anything you know they, they become weak and uh, the varicose veins is like where you see some clients that have like little purple you know pockets of blood you can see the blue the blue veins and they just kind of look like uh you know like a pretzel of uh, blue pooled blood the pool the blood just pools there it doesn't you know have the blood flow to get back so that's why massage is very good and again you keep it at a level three out of a ten when you're working with somebody that has varicose veins and always slower to give you know the the veins a chance to you know to uh, send the blood up and then have the valves close you want to stay away from working too much directly you never want to work directly on the varicose veins you never want to you know uh, put any pressure so avoid those areas especially they feel a little warm you know and, and they are very painful i've had had clients with severe varicose veins and their legs really hurt and are very painful so be careful you know uh, you might want to accommodate with bolsters or pillows and try to keep their legs above their heart level if they're in a lot of pain if they're not just a regular bolster will do or a reg i usually use pillows because they're slightly higher and you want to keep the blood flow from going you know for pulling and being too much if they're especially if they're having pain from from lasting too long in their legs so it does help when their legs are raised above you know the heart level you know maybe putting a high pillow on there and uh like i said uh, varicose veins are common and especially with pregnant women people that stand for long periods of time people that are overweight so just accommodate to your clients needs and any of these actually make sure you accommodate to your clients needs because it's always about your client make sure you do a good medical history be prior you know uh talk on the phone with them and see if you can find out anything of what's going on with them that you can research before and uh well that's it this is part two we're moving into the next uh, i think it's the lymphatic system next and i look forward to that and until the next time create a great day